Okay, greetings everyone. Um, this is Cameron Say from ICTN 3220 East Carolina University. Um, I'm going to, this is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to produce to introduce you to a, a programming language called Rex. And it's especially for people who've never programmed before. So I, I have a lot of Rex tutorial videos, but they're for people who've already had at least one programming course. This is one for someone who has never programmed before. So we're going to start easy and we're going to take it from there. Um, first, I'll log in to my system. I'm using a different client than you may be using. And it takes seconds to get on the session. Get a log on first. But that's okay. Fifteen seconds is a lot of time on the mainframe. Okay, the first thing I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do is use the function three dot four to go to um, a data set called Rex. Now you need to create a data set called Rex, a partition data set called Rex. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, um, we will show you how in another video. But we have we have to create libraries for our classes. Pay attention to this prefix ds name level switch here. Uh, it needs to be set so that everything you enter will prefix it with your user ID, and it just makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to my Rex folder, my Rex um, directory, and I'm going to create another one. Let, let's talk a little bit a little bit about Rex before we um, start. So Rex is what's called an interpreted language. Interpreted languages are translated line by line. Okay, uh, the interpreter reads a line of the source code, translates it to machine code, executes it, and does it. Now, this means that in general, interpreted languages run slower than compiled languages. COBOL, for example, is a compiled language. But the thing is, defined fast. I mean, you can buy Ferrari to get from Greenville to Raleigh in 15 minutes, but you're probably not going to make it because you're probably going to have a detour through jail to, to jail um, on your way. Get stopped by the police if you try to drive 200 miles an hour with your Ferrari, which your Ferrari will do. <clears throat> um, so my RAV4 is just fine. It'll do 70, and that's all I need. My point is that interpreted languages are fast enough so that they can do most jobs comfortably. Now, would you um, do something that requires a lot of speed? Um, no, you would either use C or similar for that. But for most programming tasks, um, interpreted languages are just fine. And the upside of interpreted languages is that they're much easier to maintain because you don't have to compile them. So they're simpler. Um, and Rex was invented by a guy by the name of Mike Kalishar, right? Mike Kalishar. I don't know what, where Mike lives, but I know one of his cr close friends, uh, um, Chip Davis. I got Chip's name for a second. Chip Davis, he lives in Apex. Chip probably knows more about Rex than anybody on the planet besides Mike. And um, I've, I've said this in public in, in Chip's presence, and nobody ever contradicted. I mean, he is a super. Rex Guru, and he's a friend of mine. I, I've been knowing Chip for ten, about ten years. He lives in a place. He has a, an airplane that he flies around. Not a big plane, but you know, kind of cool to have an airplane. So he flies the conference. But anyway, the purpose of Rex is to be a very, very simple. Rex is the simplest computer language I know of. Okay, I don't know but a simpler language than Rex. So it will do um, some amazing things, but it's very simple, and it is particularly good at text processing. Um, you can write a web application with Rex, et cetera. It's very easy language. So let's take a look at Rex, OK? Um, I'm going to create a, a file. Uh, I'm going to say S, what I want to call this thing, ECU Rex 1. 
how many characters is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I was counting, so I want to be able to put another X in there. I leave off one of the X's sometimes. Okay. When teaching programming, I always like to start with variable assignment. Okay. How does a variable get its value? And variables are these these entities that, that hold values in programs, for those of you that have never programmed before. So let's start with one that says um, number equals one. And then I'm going to tell it to say number. And that's it. That's our first program. Uh, I forgot to tell you that at the top of each rex on, on the mainframe, you have to put a commented word rex somewhere up there so the interpreter knows, the, the um, system knows that this is a rex program that needs to be interpreted. Okay, so this is our first program. Number equals one, say number. Now to run this program, I can do it a couple of ways, but one of the ways I can run it is to say TSO, X and then put my, my the full name of the file. There. And I'm going to copy this so um, I don't have to keep doing that. Now that's kind of cumbersome, but it's there, there are easy ways to run it. We'll, we'll worry about that later. But let's see if our program runs. Okay. Um, another thing I, I do, this is just me, because uh, I like for the screen to start. I can put an I up here and insert a line. And I'm going to say call and in, in one uh, quote, T-S-O-C-L-R. Now that's that's got nothing to do with Rex, but that is um, a system assembler program that was written. Marriage wrote, wrote a little simple program to clear the screen. So my program will always start at the top. Let's save this and then let's run our program again. Okay. Um, let's do something a little fancier. Okay. Uh, let's say delete this line, delete this line, and then insert 10 lines. I 10 is what I put up there. Let's say num1 equals, need a space between those. Four. Num two equals six. Sum equals num one plus num. I'm doing this all in uppercase, but it, it, um, Rex doesn't care too say some. I think you're following this. This is not too complicated. Now let's run that program right in. Again, control V. 10. Okay. Um, you might be underwhelmed at some of this, but we'll, we'll, do, we'll do some fancy stuff. Um, you haven't programmed before, so I'm giving you time to build your confidence up. A lot of people think programming is hard, but I don't think there's anything hard, hard about what we just did. I mean, I, you know, email me if you disagree, but I don't see anything difficult about that at all. Okay, so now, now what do we want to do? Uh, let's do something a little fancier, okay? Um, let's do something a little fancier. I'm gonna put DDs here, and I'm gonna I 
10. Now, I'm going to put say. Pull. Pull takes in the name. So you just, and look, so a couple of things I didn't say. Um, Rex is what's called a weekly type language. You'll see in COBOL that we have to be real specific about the nature of our variables. Is it a number? Is it a literal? Is it a, is it a um, alphanumeric character? We have to be real specific about what type it is. It's a, it's a strongly typed language. Rex and most scripting languages are what's, what are called weekly type languages, meaning you can call a variable whatever you want, an integer, and the next line, it can be a character. It just doesn't matter, right? And we'll, you'll see that going forward. So, so it's going to take whatever I put in the, key, in the keyboard, enter at the screen, and put it in the variable name. Now I say, um, what is your hometown? I'm going to pull that hometown. Then I'm going to say, say, what is your major? And you notice I put these little in, in quotes. And I'm going to pull major. Easy, right? But you can do some very powerful things with Rex. Um, now I'm going to say your name is say. You are from town. Say your major is is major. Simple, huh? Say this. Now, let's see if this works. Check my syntax. Pretty simple. <clears throat> Run it again. Cam. Durham. IT. Voila. So that's, that's a, a little general introduction to Rex. We're going to do some other things. We're going to look at loops. We're going to look at if statements, things like that. But let's just take this one step at a time. So go ahead and get that directory built and see if you can write some of this code yourself. Um, and uh, I'll see you next time.